All right, um, my name is Jude Jepo, and um, this um, evening I want to like take you on a tutorial on how to do a very simple IGRF that is um, International Geomagnetic Reference Field Calculation and uh, we'll just be very fast about it because this is meant to be a very short tutorial so you go ahead and create a new project and uh, let's name it um, IGRF and um, let's save it here <coughs> and the next thing you're going to do is just to add your grid if you have multiple grids you can add so for example I'm using this 181 we're adding it and now for you to actually make this calculation all you need to do is to save this particular grid in a database so that you can manipulate the database so we'll go to grid and image utilities and um, save grids to database now all you need to do is to name the grid file they just name it 181 and um, no sorry you take the grid file here which is 181 and in the database they just name it 181 for just conversion sorry 181 the data channel will be z so let's take z and just leave all that uh, the default state and you click ok and now this will create a database containing this particular information now we can see that we have the xyz just take a look at it igrf actually uses the geographic coordinate system but because i like working with the um, uh, projected coordinate system not at this stage probably at the stage where you're going to contour your maps i always try my best possible to make sure that i do that in order to avoid a case where my maps are not in their projected data um, projected coordinate system so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to coordinates and I'll say new projected coordinate system. Now the current coordinates, um, coordinate channels are X and Y. So I click on next. And what is the existing uh, coordinate system? It's in geographic coordinate system. And it is WGS84. That's the datum. And the local datum transform is uh, WGS84 world. So you click on OK here. Now which is the new longitude? Let's just name it long. And the new latitude channel, let's name it large. And you can now say next so it's the projected and for this particular place the projection is in utm zone 31 so we scroll to utm zone 31 north where are you that's okay it's in meters and we we'll click on okay here and um, that's about does it so the next thing that we're going to do is to do the igrf the, the calculation so you go to gx here and load the menu so we're going to load the igrf menu it is here and you click on OK. So here it is here, IGRF. So how do you calculate? You want to calculate IGRF its channel. So I prefer you leave this all this default because of the system we are using. Now the IGRF is supposed to be uh, 2020, but because of the software, the software is not yet updated to take 2020. So just leave it on uh, auto. And um, what is the I surveyed it usually i use 2007 slash 07 slash 31 that is at the first of january 2007 that's about the time this particular aeromagnetic data was acquired so what are the input longitude channels i will leave it at x and y because like i said igrf uses the geographic coordinate system and the x and y adds, um, channels here yeah? At the geographic coordinate system so now usually if you had an elevation channel what you are supposed to do was to sample that elevation channel so that you will get these values but because uh, this particular tutorial is not about is sampling the elevation channel and getting the elevation values there you can just use a single value of 80 meters which is the flight height at which this particular aeromagnetic data was acquired so and you name this field total field we'll just say tf inclination is inc declination is dc just uh, for, for us to name these channels and we'll click on ok that's about how to calculate uh, these um uh, compute uh, igrf now we see that the channels are not displayed you just right click on any place here and say display all it will not display the total field the inclination and the declination one other thing although it is not really very very important at this stage is that i try to put all this my 
data channels into just one channel like if you right click here and list we have several channels that are here so this usually give us difficulty in calculating the statistics here because if you calculate the statistics here all you see is that the mean will be 6.3 minus 6.3 rather and um, in doing several other uh, calculations especially other fast Fourier transforms that you need to do probably you want to do reduce the equator you want to do butter world filtering and all that especially when you're using the mag map menu you need to have some of these um the inclination and the declination their statistics in this way it's not going to be correct so what i usually do is that i export this database so i go to database exports so to csv i'm exporting this to csv and uh, the data file name, I'll give you, let me say, 181 again, .csv, uh, 181. I'll click Save. Let me just put the .csv here. And uh, display channel. No, I want all the database channel, and I want all the lines to be selected. Do I include dummies? I said no. Include channel names, yes, and all that. So we click on OK. So this particular operation will export this database um, uh, the, the database into a csv so what i usually do is that i re-import this so that i now create a new database out of it so um, let's go to uh, database import ascii and uh, let's look for where the file is we see we have 181.csv here we open it so let's use the wizard and it will take us so which is the delimiter and uh, the delimiter is either space or comma so let's click on next we'll see that it's a microsoft excel csv file it's not a it can't still be a comma delimited space but then we can leave it as microsoft excel which are the characters so all you need to do is to click on next here and um, all this you just click on finish so save template i don't need to save the template do i import this data into the current database i will say no then i will give it a name so i will say 181 new for example or any name that same that makes a lot of sense to you so you click on ok and now we are having all this our data in one single line if you click on uh, look at list you see them there will be one now if we check our the statistics here we'll see that we're having the mean as minus 5.66 and all that maximum is this as opposed to what we did when we got here so and now you can save these stats for the ink you, you save it as ink because you will need to assess it some other time let's use carbs here you may need to assess it some other time okay and let's do same for the declination and uh, let's do statistics let's save this and let's save it as the declination so whenever we want to perform more operations you will see that um, we will need to do this so uh, if you just go to uh, the file here it's on this place we'll see this ink here and the dig so that will give us an idea of where these things are stored so and whenever you want to make your calculation you can use this particular value for the inclination and uh, use this value the mean value for the declination calculation i'm sure we are going to get to that stage next time and that's about wraps it up on how to make computations on igrf using oasis montage thank you very much for watching